Oh my gosh. It's just me and you and, and not some short form content that's going to confuse you or meant to hook you. Um, I'd actually like to take my time helping you right now. And hello, it's Yusuf. It's Yusuf, like Yusuf, you're a gym BFF from TikTok. It's Yusuf. You may know me as your trainer. You may know me as someone who probably uh, woke you up in some way when it comes to getting out of the fitness rat race. I love taking credit for that. I can't lie. Um, but really, what I'm really excited about is you and me sharing this moment together, getting you fit. Um, I say that because it's really difficult when you're not there. And sometimes you need people along the way to help you illuminate the path so that you can get a better idea as to how to move forward as your best you. And so sometimes it takes someone like me um, who used to run gyms and used to be around people. And I've had to listen to all your stuff, whether I liked it or not, and um, help you. Really, that's the whole point of this is to help you. Um, selfishly too, I feel great when I help people. So, um, if you're like, this is too good to be true. Why is he giving me all of this gym information, um, for free? And why is it just on YouTube? Well, the good news is I'm not special. Um, there's definitely many forms of fitness advice and fitness help. Maybe you found a calling, uh, and a liking to mine. And for that, I actually appreciate you maybe more than you appreciate me. Um, cause I would argue you give me meaning and you help me make sense of all of this. Um, so number one, someone said on TikTok that I love lists. I do love lists. My goal is to keep a tidy, organized, but yet also free agenda on what we're going to cover. So number one, what we're going to cover is a little bit of our actual agenda on what this show and what this podcast and what this YouTube and what this video series is going to be. Number one, it's going to be to help you in your fitness journey. I get that it's confusing. I get that it's challenging. I get there's a lot of misinformation out there. Some things you would think are honestly extremely obvious, but you still have to say them and do them because some people still, the obvious somehow finds a, a, a way to escape from people. That's a whole other point. Um, but really, most importantly, what this is intended to do is to help you build muscle, burn body fat, and maintain your flow despite your setbacks. So fitness, if you and I would like to define it right now and what our progress and what our success is going to be, our success is going to be seeing progress and seeing progress in very specific ways. Number one, you're going to build muscle. Number two, you're going to burn body fat. And number three, you're going to not stop. Okay, pretty cool. Because that's actually the whole jig. The whole jig is you not stopping. As soon as you stop, you wither. When I say wither, you literally wither. So I don't want you to do that. I want you to keep getting stronger. I want you to keep pushing forward because I'm doing it. <laughs> and you know what? The journey is just way more fun when we're all doing it together. So we're going to build muscle. We're going to burn body fat. And we're not going to stop. Okay? Um, so that's number one, what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve here. Now, where I come in and where I'd like to help you is really hopefully highlighting a lot of the simplest answers and giving them to you with context. There's a lot of information out there that it has its own agenda and its own um, intention. And none of it's wrong, but you would just have to factor in the intention and who's saying it and to what end, like for what specifically. So we're very clear here as to what we're talking about and what our end is, what our intention is. So I, I would actually say maybe step one is actually complete now. Number two is what's it going to look like for us to solve this problem? And what's it going to look like for me and you to be friends and talk about gym stuff? Um, what that'll look like is a series of interactions. Fitness in some way is solved, but fitness in some other way is also still not solved. Um, fitness is solved in the sense we know the stuff of how to build muscle and how to burn body fat. But fitness, as it relates to you, is actually the exercise of being your best you. I would say that fitness and training and working hard on yourself um, and the physical manifestation that you bring, the energy that you bring, is a continual work in progress. And we're going to continually have more and more distractions that arrive in our life to challenge us. And so the distractions may come in the form of, you know, maybe at first for you, maybe it's a lost relationship. 
Um, maybe it's losing yourself. Oftentimes is what happens in lost relationships. Maybe um, you're maybe you've actually just found yourself and you want to improve yourself. Or maybe it's none of that. And maybe you just want to get jacked. Because for me, it was a little bit of all of that. It was a little bit of like, I don't I want to build and grow into my life in a way that I feel great. I look great. But also the energy that I bring people is good. So having that as a very clear goal, ideally, is what it will continually look like to, uh, for us to just not stop at that goal. But then also, I'm hoping that you find a sense of community and you find a sense of belonging and the fact that we literally are all doing this together, like every one of us. Have you ever seen that post? And it's like this guy taking a photo of literally just a highway. And he's like, it's crazy to think how everyone's got their own life and they're the main character in it. Yes. And it's always been that way. And it's kind of creepy to think about that. But it's also really nice and reassuring to know that on your journey, the very journey, the very, very journey that you're embarking on right now, the one that you're about to endure or you're currently enduring and pursuing your best self um, is in some way being pursued by everybody. And it's kind of nice because it, Nice. It's nice to know that because it gets you out of the us versus them mentality where you don't like people, you get negative, and um, you kind of lose hope, and faith becomes a bit more scarce in your own mental landscape because you're just quick to judge or you're quick to be angry. But like we're all doing it, and we're all trying our best, and we're all just trying to handle ourselves well. So um, at this point in time right now, I'd like for us to consider a few things. We all have a starting point. Not only we all have a starting point, we all have a history, and then we all have our own specific and unique gifts and attributes that I would believe, and many um, people way smarter than me would believe, it's sort of like your duty to bring these gifts out. (laughs) Um, Not just so that other people can have them, but so that you can experience them. Because when you see that you have gifts and that you can achieve and you can see progress and you can overcome, that's the that's literally the best part of the entire journey is recognizing your own self-worth and that you were created with a reason and a purpose. And it's just so fun when that path illuminates in front of you. And who would have thought lifting some weights and listening to Rodney Coleman yell, yeah, buddy, and you choosing to eat a little protein and eat some vegetables would all of a sudden reveal a path for your best you. Think about it, though. If you want to be, you want to be specific here, think about it. Do you think that you were destined and born to be a fat, lazy slob? Do you think that you were destined and born to poke through your shirts in a way that's not very flattering to even you? No, come on. This is where I feel like for a lot of us, we have these inherent truths and these inherent voices in our head that tell us and guide us what our path is. How do I live my best life? And so what I'm hoping in now step two for what this continually looks like for us to work together and share our stories and share our successes is to learn. So if we learn and we continue committing to a new perspective, a continually upgraded perspective, that's going to give you a new combination of the Rubik's cube to solve from to completion every time you wake up, it's kind of fun and refreshing and energizing to start your day knowing that you're going to get challenged and all you can do is hope to learn and overcome. And then, of course, obviously succeed. So number three, the last and final thing that we're going to talk about, which is actually going to be the point of this video, is how do you actually succeed? So let's get into the nitty gritty of like what it means for you to actually succeed in the gym, in your weight loss journey, in your muscle building journey, in your gym journey. Um, A little bit about me and why I feel inspired to talk about this. I have more people than I could possibly, probably give credit to, who I would say have contributed to my experience in fitness and my experience in personal training and my experience in people. And a lot of these people I've had the absolute pleasure to work with because they saw something and maybe what I might've shared in fitness in my own fitness journey, and they felt called to work with me or they felt aligned to work with me. And I felt These people are the reason, these are the exact experiences, these people have given me the experiences that then allows me to turn it on to you. So if you're someone listening to this and we've met and we've worked together, whether that be at a gym or whether that be on the internet um, or you're another creator, it's really nice to have you here and I'm grateful to be in your company. So the stuff that we're going to 
absolutely blast through and start getting a little silly on is we're going to start fucking on our fitness goals, right? We're going to start absolutely uh, one, two Mayweathering it. We're going to start bodying it. Uh, it's going to be a total upgrade of you. So what we'll cover in this may be of interest to you. And so who am I to talk about this stuff? Why would I talk about this stuff? Um, look, I'm not here looking disgusting, veiny out the ass for no reason, okay? Um, I'm here to share what I feel really works for me and what has worked for other people. And um, that's one in part why I feel credible to do it is it works for me. I'm experiencing experiencing it and I'm in it every day. But then also there is a little part of it that's a little bit of the credibility I'll just share with you so that you can have some you know, logic and reasoning to how you take the information in. And I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I have, I, so I started working out probably when I was 10, maybe younger, um, like literally lifting weights because my dad made me. And we, it's, that didn't do anything crazy. I wasn't supposed to be a bodybuilder. I wasn't supposed to be anything crazy. My dad just wanted me to be fit and strong. And he was continually active throughout his fatherhood of me. And um, even it actually predated that. So he was obese in his childhood and went through an incredible transformation in his early life um, going into high school and completely transformed himself, lost a ton of weight, began upgrading the way that he ate and take, uh, took care of himself and his body. And he was able to take that transformation and then achieve the results, uh, achieve results that got him to a track scholarship um, where he just that was the very springboard that actually made room for me to be fit and healthy and share this with you so my dad was fit always in my life and so he brought me to the gym with him and so i would lift weights so i would do some leg press and leg extension machines i was i didn't really know or like it that much but i was fun because i was my dad um so that's one is I've been in this lifestyle and upbringing. So people simply don't have that. And I'm hoping I can share a lot of things that will be useful to people who don't have that or didn't have that. And then second, a bit of credibility. Um, I became fascinated with resistance training right around my first heartbreak around 13 years old. And so I was a skinny kid and all I wanted to do was build muscle, burn body fat, and just be jacked. I wanted to get jacked. I wanted to be big. I wanted to be fit. And I wanted to feel really great about myself. So at 18 and 19, at 18, I got my personal training certification. That's actually a whole other story. And if you'd like me to speak more about my, my in-person, my earlier in-person gym experience, I'd be happy to. If you want to ask a comment or say something about it or message me a question, I'd be happy to. I just don't want to belabor a lot of this because a lot, a lot of the meat in this episode that I think is going to make you successful is not actually in my career. Um, it's more so the takeaways from my career that I'll share with you. So um, training and in a gym, I started at 18 and I, this is the most important part. I've spoken to probably over 10,000 people beginning their fitness journey and or starting a gym and or just venting to me, telling me what was wrong with themselves and what they wanted to achieve as a result of joining the gym and being a part of a gym and becoming more active. So I've heard 10,000 people tell me where they are hoping to be and also what they don't like and what they want to achieve. And so that insight and that experience and that data has been extremely enlightening and a heavy privilege to, to have because you kind of have like this shortcut of information. Like I met 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds, 80-year-olds joining the gym. And they all had their stories and they all had their unique perspectives and they all had their flaws and they all had their gifts. And so um, just from that data collection alone as a personal trainer, which was crazy, especially starting off at 18, going on to 19, going on to 20, um, I'm 26 now, going on through those early parts of the years, it was like speed dating for weight loss information. <laughs> basically. And so that's where I'm hoping to give you guys a lot of the tenets and principles that worked for people who were in the gym. Um, not a lot of this is super original, but maybe you might hear it in a way that you haven't before. And that's what I'm hoping to give you. So the stuff that we're going to cover today and the real meat 
of what I feel credible to speak on and inspired to speak on is how you train yourself to get results, how you eat and what kind of information you feed yourself to continually get results. And then three, how to restore and properly recover from your training and your daily ritual and your daily habits and your life, how to recover from your life, basically. <laughs> so these three things actually create a perfect cycle. So think about it first as first, I'm going to spend energy. Think about this critically. First, I'm going to wake up, spend energy, right? If you had to look at you from the most truth perspective, the highest level of you are energy. And when you wake up first thing in the morning, te technically that's first us, right? Morning, first thing. We spend energy. And then what we're really doing in that, in that hunt, in that hunt slash gather collection is we ideally ingest, we eat afterwards, and then we restore and we process and we digest and we recover. So this actually forms a perfect cycle. And I think about, you know, you eat and then you digest and then you poo poo and then you use it for fuel, let's just say. Um, so this forms a perfect cycle. Now, each of these three categories uh, has their own most important lessons. So there's lessons on how to train yourself, what the most important things are when it comes to training yourself, what the most important lessons are and things are when it comes to feeding yourself and the most important things uh, and what those things are when it comes to recovering and taking care of your body. So with those things, without further ado, let's just get into it. Let's just talk about what you're probably here for and what you're trying to achieve by listening and learning in this. So let's start with fitness first, because this is the funnest thing. Uh, the, the, the best part about the gym is moving your body. The worst part about the gym for some people is also moving your body. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. Um, some people where they're starting is either water is wet. Elvis is dead. The sky is blue. I'm just going to say facts. Don't take offense to this. This is just what it is. Some people are going to start off overweight. Some people are going to start off underweight. Some people are going to start off completely beginners. Some people are going to start off with some foundation because they've done sports or something like that. So fitness, how can I define or how can we define as a team right now? How can we define fitness and what it means for us to be active? How do we spend energy and how do we spend energy in a way that when we train to physically construct our best body, um, how do we train in a way that we know we're going to see results? It's not pointless. I'm not just enduring this pain for no reason, but so that I can actually achieve success and results. And what is the success in fitness? I want to start with this. Number one, it's a little different for everybody, but it comes back to the same basic things. Like, for instance, just seeing progress. So let's just say, for instance, there's fitness. We could isolate the goal with this context, actually, that we should start with. Number one, we all got a body, right? Some of y'all might look Humpty Dumpty. Some of y'all might look immaculate. Some of you guys are loving it. Some of you guys are hating it. But what you do have is a body, whether you like it or not. So the body, this meat suit with muscle, bones, tissue, organs, fat, a brain, spirit, maybe, who knows, more than likely. Um, your body has a meat suit. You, you, you are a meat suit, basically, let's just say. Or we, well, actually, we misidentify with it, if you want to go there. Um, so we have this meat suit, and the meat suit should be trained. Why should the meat suit be trained? Because it gives you more energy when it's trained, and it's sturdy, and it's strong. And it also looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. But also, it looks great, it feels great, and it's, it's better to be inside a body that's working as opposed to not. Right? Fair. So considering, okay, well, I just want to improve how my body feels. What are some things I can do to do that in my fitness? So number one, this is the weirdest pyramid scheme of all. But you should be spending energy to get energy. You all ever seen like, why is it that it costs me energy to go up and go to the gym, but you, yet you say I'm going to be more energetic afterwards. And it's kind of funny, I know. But think about it like this very simply, energy feeds energy. Let's just call it that. That's an oversimplification. It's a little bit of a mantra, but energy feeds energy. So when you start spending energy and moving your body, maybe you're out on a walk listening to this. Maybe you're driving to work. Maybe you're doing something where you're also listening or watching, but you're doing right? So now to actually be doing stuff in fitness, 
what you want to be doing is ideally weight training and ideally some cardio training daily. Something. You should be doing something daily. Like this, that's not, that's not a crazy thought. It's not a crazy thing to say. And the people who said daily and you took offense to that, you're the exact fat bitch that needs to hear exactly the rest of the fucking words that are going to come out of my mouth. All right. So if you thought training daily was already crazy, you're so fucking in for a treat because that has been the ceiling to you getting fit in the first place. Are you seeing anything worthwhile in fitness results in the first place? You never get a day off. You don't. You Like, what's a day off of the body look like? Show me. Take one off. Show me. You call it, that's, no, you're being a fucking bottom feeding heathen. You're just jacking off and masturbating and just chilling saying you need rest when you look like shit. Day off from what, bruv? So that's, that's number one. What does training look like? Training your muscles and training your heart every day. You should be out hunting and gathering. You literally are a hunting and gathering machine, and then you choose to resemble tasks of that of a lima bean or a fucking wheelchaired sloth, and you wonder why you feel like shit or your body doesn't fucking work. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's one. So we're going to be moving our body, training our muscles, and moving our heart, training our heart. The specifics of that look as follows. Training your muscles. You should be lifting weights. You should be in a gym. You should be lifting weights or at least lifting weights at home. You should be training with physical resistance. That means damaging your muscle tissues in a specific way to build more muscle and create more strength and greater physical abilities, okay? That's training. It's like practicing for doing shit. For that five year from now, eight year from now episode, you and your mom are walking down the street and you needed a protector or something like that. Or you need to display your human essence and show your strength. Well, you think you're going to do that looking like an absolute I'm not, I, you guys, I can't give you that many punches. I can, I can only give you so many when they matter, but you get, you get my point. You get my point. So we're going to train our muscles. I'm going to actually go into what that looks like so that you get a good idea as to how to start training and lifting weights starting now. While I do that, I opened up a ghost energy drink um, because I'm probably going to need it. And I want this to be really long because I want to cover all the stuff that actually matters and I'm not going to get up off my chair until I do that. So without further ado, let's sip really quickly. Okay. We're back. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So Fitness, what does it look like to actually get fit? I'm also going to let you know this might get funny. Um, the further I get into it, because the more I talk about stuff that really matters to me, the more I'm going to be myself. That first half was me being very like, you know, making sure I don't step on any special snowflakes as feelings or something. So fitness, what does it look like to actually train and build your muscle? So let's just start with you should be training your muscles at least three days a week. You will get to a point where you want to do way more if you're a normal person. I do seven. I like six. I do seven because if I don't do something, I will eat myself. Like that's what it feels like at least. So I train in the gym six to seven days a week. The bare minimum for you, you worm, you sloth, who thinks that that's too much or you have a job or you have a f family or you have kids or whatever is three days a week, three days a week, four days a week is fine because when you break down muscle tissue, it needs about three days to recover anyway. So hypothetically, if you go through a push pull leg split 
maybe arms if you're a dude, push pull legs, arms, then you do calves and abs at the end of every workout ish alternating. You'll be fine. Muscle wise, so long as you eat your protein, so long as you sleep, so long as you uh, aren't, are, and I was going to aren't, uh, aren't dumb. <laughs> so long as you aren't dumb, you're going to see results doing that. Okay. Push, pull legs, arms. If you're a dude, maybe two leg days a week. If you're a chick for sure, y'all typically love that stuff. Um, I would recommend, I would recommend that. And I would recommend it in that exact way. Push, pull legs, arms, push, pull legs. If you're a girl. Or legs, push, pull, legs, and then break. And then legs, push, pull, legs, and then break. Something like that would work great. So um, in terms of what to do in the gym to be successful, you didn't think I was going to go over the exact exercises, did you? Little do you know, I have the time today. Okay? Let's start in chronological order in push, pull, legs. What exercises you need to be doing to be good at the gym and see progress and see success and achieve life maxing and getting the partner of your dreams and getting the job of your dreams and living the life that you want to live. What exercises you need to do, I will tell you. Uh, One thing that I did not lose from the gyms was my addiction to energy drinks because we had a vending machine. At the front desk, I had energy drinks. And I just ate those, drank those nonstop. Before every appointment for a new client, I would just drink it. I would chug an energy drink. I don't know how I survived back then. But anyway, so the exercises you need to do, starting with push. We'll start with chest. Everyone has a chest. Even you chicks, you guys need to do this. Just for a little bit, just to create a foundation, okay? Exercise number one on push is dumbbell chest press. I'm just going to rapid fire these because I know these. I've already given this talk before. Dumbbell chest press. Machine chest press. You need to get good at chest pressing motions. Ideally, number one is dumbbell chest press, then machine chest press. And then if you want to be a star student, push-ups. And then one more thing is dumbbell incline chest press because you have pec major. People who are watching me right now can see pec major. It's like the bottom three-fourths of my yit, my yitty, my breasticle, my chesticle. And then the upper, when I go on an incline part of the bench, that's going to hit my upper chest. This inserts into the shoulder. It gives me a nice, beautiful shelf appearance up here. That's what incline chest press will do. So you've got dumbbell chest press. You've got incline chest press. You've got push-ups, and you've got machine chest press. Chest flies are a plus. That is all you need for chest. That is all you need for chest. That is all you need for chess. If you do that and you scale your progress and you intend and you try and go to a a strain level that is an 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 sometimes, you'll be fine. You'll build muscle. You're going to break down the muscle appropriately. You should struggle because that is what your strength needs to really rise to the occasion. You just struggle. People will be doing absolute nothing and wondering why they're seeing no progress. It's like, did you even struggle? That's chest. Next is shoulders for push day. Shoulders, one of the most beautiful physical attributes that the human's been given besides everything else he's been given. Um, Shoulders actually has three heads to it. There's three parts to the shoulder. We'll just say front, side, and back. Let's just say it. There's more specific terms, but let's just say front, side, and back of your shoulder. You should be looking up the anatomy of a shoulder in some way on Google Images and looking at how it's divided into three. You've got a part of the shoulder known as the front of the shoulder that is responsible for lifting your arms out in front of you and over your head. All right? That's the front of your shoulder. The front shoulder muscle tissue is responsible for doing that. What you should be doing to train that part of the shoulder, that's that's the front of you, having front delts, having shoulders will literally make you look 15 pounds heavier and like you actually are a human being who is built with structural integrity as opposed to some noodle, worm, limp bitch. Okay? Hmm. Every now and then I got to throw in something kind of, something that I mean, you know? This is where my personality really comes out. This is really what I think. (laughs) Uh, So you've got the shoulder. 
front of it, what you do to get good at the shoulder is dumbbell shoulder press. And really, that's actually it, but you should and you will be using your shoulder in the chest press a little bit, in the push-up for certain. Um, if there's any one more exercise you want to do for the front of the shoulder, it's front raises, dumbbell front raises. Those work fine. I would say if there's any one that you should learn for a fact, it is dumbbell shoulder press because you can add significantly more weight to that exercise over time. Therefore, you've got a way easier time literally building muscle doing that exercise as compared to a front raise. This is not as strenuous as a front raise because you have to use way less weight. It's more difficult of a motion. So all the top exercises I'm giving you right now are so that they're easily scalable and it's as few things that you need to know to do to build muscle. I'm not going to give you all the little itty bitty dumb shit that trainers will try and make people do that some crossover exercise between this and this that's like a third variation of it with this specific fucking handle. It's like, oh my God, nobody fucking needs that. You literally need to shut up. So that's number one for shoulder. Really number one for shoulder is dumbbell shoulder press, okay? And then machine shoulder press would be next in my opinion. That's the front part of the shoulder. The next part of the shoulder, this is like exercise ASMR. The next part of the shoulder is the lateral head. So this outer part, gives me the real roundness, the real width to my shoulder and you too. What exercise would I get good at for that? It is going to be without a doubt, most obviously lateral raises, dumbbell lateral raises. There are some machines that work fine. I love dumbbell lateral raises and I like doing them a lot. You'll notice that the, the actual, when you look at the diagram of the shoulder muscle, you'll see that the muscle fibers and insertions actually run kind of curved and a little bit in a manner where people will say, oh, I should do lateral raises straight out or a little bit back or a little bit forward. And the correct answer is a little bit of all of it is fine because the shoulder, the lateral head of the delt actually has a little bit of a curvature shape to it. So you can hit it on either way. If you don't know the name of the game of resistance training, it's to stretch the muscle based on its length, lengthen it and then contract it. When you lengthen it with weight, that's where the damage is. That's the eccentric part of the motion. You want to activate it and damage it. So um, a little bit of all of it is fine. Just be consistent with what you do. And then you also do want to make sure that um, you have your shoulders and your scapula set with proper posture. What that looks like is you shrug your shoulders up to your ears, pull them back, and then set them. And that's your posture when you should be doing lateral raises. And it keeps all the tension directly on the lateral head of the shoulder. So that's lateral raises. And then the correct uh, hand motion is to pour wa water as if you were pouring it out of a pitcher or a glass um, on either hand a little bit. So you want to like slightly turn it a little bit. Like you're literally pouring water out as you lift your arms up simultaneously. It's a little bit of a little bit of a fluid, nice motion. Okay, so that's the lateral part. And then next, finally, on the delt, the rear delt, we have the, uh, the, the posterior, the back, the back part of your delt, your rear delt. Your rear delt is actually what's responsible for also lifting your shoulders up to your uh, face in any way, pulling as well. It inspires your arms to pull. Um, and so with the lateral, uh, so with the back part, the rear part of your shoulder, uh, reverse flies, reverse flies, uh, are without a doubt reverse flies, the actual pack deck machine. I personally like a little bit more sometimes than the dumbbell. If you do get very, I would say dumbbell reverse flies are also fine on this too. I actually, the reason I'm, I'm actually struggling to suggest wholeheartedly this just now is because I actually really like the TRX. I like the TRX face poles or the TRX uh, W's or Y's, those work great on shoulders. If you don't do the TRX for shoulders, it's actually one of the most amazing ways to stimulate your shoulders. The TRX is like a buck. It's like 150 bucks. You can do a lot of stuff on it. If you have a home gym and you don't have a TRX, I would highly suggest investing in one. Very low cost compared to how much stuff you can do with it. So that's why I was thinking. I was thinking well, actually the TRX is great for a lot of rear delt exercises. I've had way more success hitting my rear delts on the TRX than I ever had by anything dumbbell or machine wise, actually. Um, so that's the rear delts. 
The next and last final push mu muscle for the upper body, we've done chest, we've done shoulders. The last muscle is the tricep. The tricep also has two or three heads, actually. I don't remember. The tricep, here's what I will just say to get good at for the tricep. This is really what matters. There's about five different variations of cable exercises that you can do for triceps. Um, but really the best way, in my opinion, to attack triceps is the cable to start, like just having the cable. You can do dumbbell kickbacks. That's fine. The cable is just so, it's so natural for the, for, for our limbs to fall in line with cable when it comes to triceps. It feels really good and really easy. Um, it's a small muscle and all you want to do is extend the arm. That's all we're doing is we're repeatedly extending the arm and the cable fixture is really nice for that. So with uh, the cable to get good at triceps, what you want to do, you know, when you lock your, push your arm back behind you and try, try and flex the back of your arm, that's your tricep. You just want to repeat that motion over and over with these cable exercises. For instance, number one would be rope. Rope cable tricep extension is great. Just keep your elbows locked in place to your sides and you squeeze the back of your arm and then keep them locked in place as you stretch. Rope is great. V-bar is great. V-bar is a bit more, actually, it's significantly more stable and sturdy, and it literally just gives you more leverage over it, and you can actually use more weight. It's a bit of a fixed bar compared to a loose bar that isn't, you know, obviously uh, as stable like a rope is. So a rope is less stable. Um, you can a lot more freedom in moving it. V-bar is great also. V-bar is great to stimulate it with heavy weight because you do need that sometimes. Um, rope is great. High rep. V-bar is great, lower rep. Um, then straight bar. Straight bar is fine. That's okay. And then easy curl bar for cable is good also. All of it is good. I would say V-bar and then rope. And then I personally love single arm cable tricep extensions. I just take the attachment off altogether. And I just try and fix my posture to where I know I can really isolate my tricep. I'm not looking for a crazy weight. I'm just looking for a weight that I can fully extend my tricep and squeeze and feel comfortable doing so for about 10 to 12 reps, single arm cable. You just hold the little nub at the end of the cable and you just extend it. Feels amazing. Feels great. So that's triceps. And then obviously triceps are also uh, involved in push-ups. So if you do push-ups, you actually attack all three of these push muscles at once because a push-up is literally what? You pushing your whole ass self up. <laughs> so the push up is great. Um, so that's the push muscles, upper body push muscles. We've gotten chest, upper chest, shoulders, your front delt, your side delt, your back delt, and your triceps. Next for pull, pull muscles, the upper body pull. I love pull. Pull is your back. Pull is your posterior chain. And we often do not use it as much as we should. And actually because of that, like given we're forward facing creatures, I'm sure if we were posterior facing creatures, that would be a different story, but we're forward facing creatures. So typically our posture rounds into our desk or our phone. Because of that, our back is actually lacking any integrity or structural muscular awareness whatsoever. Cause it's just not super engaged. We're very forward dominant. That's why a lot of the front muscles will be tight on your body. Um, you'll be kind of like your shoulders will be, will be, shoulders will be caved in for, for instance, and rounded. And that's why when you stretch and unwind and then stretch your back out and always reach back, it feels so good. You're literally undoing all of that stretching and all of that kind of like permanent muscle shortening. So, um, like if you haven't re re extended your arms over the back of your chair and reached back, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Basically that's, that's back, back day, except on steroids. So back day, the best exercises for back day, I'm going to start with one that's actually, it should be very obvious, but back day uh, would be pull-ups, a variation of pull-ups, assisted pull-ups, pull-ups, or lat pull-down basically is a little bit more of a fixed pull-up. But pull-down, pull-up, pull something from away from your body to your body from up over your head, pulling it towards you, okay? That's you're pulling yourself up, or it's a lat pull-down, and then regular cable width is fine. Just get very, very good at that. And most importantly, set your scapula, set your posture straight and intend to squeeze your back. A lot of people are very improperly, especially at commercial gyms, very improperly connecting themselves to their back because they're so out of the human 
has to overcompensate a lot of tightness to just really feel their back. The, hu the current human design, at least, because most of us in 2024 are very tech oriented and just shitty posture is what the point is. So with back, you want to be lat pulling down. And um, that's number one, because it's just always going to be very practical. And then two for back would be uh, any sort of row or deadlift where you're picking something up and pulling it towards you or you're picking something up in general. Um, underrated that comes in to play with this is traps, the upper part of your back that look at my traps. Okay. Look at this for a second. Do you understand why I'm saying traps? Because they look like that when I deadlift. And so these traps and shoulders are all responsible for making my body hold a lot of weight under a lot of stress and has to stretch and be tense and resilient and strong enough to be able to hold it without tearing me. So when you develop these muscles, boy, you look good. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when you develop and you look strong, you look sturdy. So rowing and then deadlifting would be um, like cable is fine. Dumbbell is fine. But get good at rowing and get good at pulling down. If you get good at that and you scale your progress um, with dumbbell row, a uh, single arm dumbbell row is fantastic. And the deadlift is fantastic. You get good at that and you will have an amazing back. And you get good at a cable row and you'll have an absolutely incredible back. And you'll feel like you've actually got some structural integrity to you. That boy, dick! you know what I'm saying? That's how you'll feel because you'll see your backside. It's actually developed. Uh, that's back. Okay. Simple enough. Then the next pull muscle would be um, biceps. Biceps are actually so cool because most people think that the biceps is the thing that makes the arm look big. It's actually not totally true. It's only a third of your arm in terms of appearance, really visually, um, especially from the front um, and the back and the side. When you get a really good look at your bicep that's fully developed, you actually realize your arm is not your bicep. It's mostly your tricep. The tricep is about two thirds of the arm, anatomically speaking. So with that being said, with the bicep, the bicep curls, the dumbbell bicep curls are going to be your absolute number one exercise to get good at. Because you can get good at that at a very heavy range and a very light range, and it's all going to be beneficial for you, especially the heavy range. Your bicep actually has fast twitch muscle fibers in it, and it's meant to think about it like yeah, moving day. You know moving day when you're holding on to a 90-pound box like this, and you're just like, Ugh! The bicep is designed to be able to hold things that are extremely heavy if it absolutely needs to. In fact, one could argue you actually might be able to hold on to more weight then you could push weight away from you in some way. Do you give it, think, ever think about that? So you got fast switch muscle. It's meant to be very strong. And uh, that's why doing heavy bicep curls from time to time is very important. And so if you just get good at dumbbell bicep curls and then dumbbell hammer curls um, from all ranges of like light to heavy, you'll have beautiful arms, beautiful front of your arms, beautiful biceps. Um, and then you'll be able to help any of your friends move whenever you want and you can sign up, you can start a side hustle. Uh, make sure that when you do get your first gig, you just Venmo me. Uh, cause I taught you. Okay. That's uh, biceps done. And actually last technical pull muscle on the human upper body was rear delts. The third, the back part of the shoulder. That's where the, uh, TRX comes in. So we actually covered that. So heavy dumbbell curls, heavy bicep curls, heavy hammer curls, Easy bar and straight bar stuff isn't just – it's not as ideal. It, it's its good because you can load a lot of weight and you can get the strain of holding a lot of weight on like a very heavy barbell, like a straight fixed bar. But dumbbells just meets the arm anatomy a little bit better so long as you're intentional about it. Um, so that's all upper body aside from abs, and I will, believe it or not, actually go into abs. Um, lastly, let's cover legs. So legs is a bit more complex – um, and no one in their right mind, no human being should ever one skip legs or two hit legs and not warm up or intend to warm up and stretch and do something that's meant to help them feel their legs or get greater mobility uh, before there were no human should approach their leg workout without stretching legs. No human should skip their leg day. No human should skip stretching their legs and taking care of their legs. Did I ever mention these are the only sets of legs it'll ever have? And there's a reason why leg day is so painful for a lot of people. A lot of people will take it too hard. And that's fine, actually, compared to, I think, 
missing the point of training entirely and taking it too lightly. Um, so long as you're recovering in return. So a lot of people, the reason why people have a hard time with legs, especially is because of their lack of mobility and the lack of tension their legs feel at all other points in their life, except for when training legs, all of a sudden you want to, you want to make your legs capable of holding on to a ton of weight, but yet you never train it or prepare it for that. That's sort of silly. Um, so legs are very strong. They're very capable. They're without a doubt, the strongest muscle groups in your body, the hamstring, the quadriceps, and then you got the calves. So the best things that you can do with lower body, number one, obviously is going to be squatting and notice how I just said squatting. I didn't say it needs to be barbell school. Notice how I didn't say it needs to be dumbbell school. Notice how I didn't say it needs to be. It, 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 if you just get good at squatting, most of us don't feel good because we don't squat. Hot take. We should all be pooping squatting. Po squatty potty. We were designed to squat and then the white man had to invent the chair. Or someone did. I don't know who did. It might have been an Asian for all I know. But someone had to invent the chair and we got used to sitting on our asses. I guess technically someone had to invent the rock. because I guess we started sitting on rocks first. Or bales of hay. My point, my point being squatting. You can squat in so many ways. You can squat with body weight. And, I, and look, and I, I, I'm actually saying this for the person who has gimpy legs and they don't feel strong in them and they don't feel good in them. And like, they've really got, if you haven't felt your legs turned on and you haven't felt your legs really, really connected to your body and strong and like loose and happy with good blood flow, you're missing out. So I'm really saying get good at squatting because that dumb motherfucker needs the bar that goddamn low because barbell squatting, if you're not used to squatting with gimpy legs is really hard. Actually. Um, I, I started there. So what you want to do with squatting is you have got to get good at the basic squat, literally. Like you need to get your squat technique down and remember how to sit the fuck down. It's kind of funny because now you sitting the fuck down is you slouched over your chair. You need to get good at the fundamental of sitting the fuck down again because the way that your body moves and bends nowadays isn't that. So that's where squatting and just holding the squat literally is a benefit to you now obviously if you want to go ham on legs you better be you better start squatting a lot this is where you get the benefit of growing your legs two important basically squatting motions will be your squat and then a version of like basically the human lunge with weight a lot of, a lot of weight and then you're squatting back up off of one leg though so that's the benefit to these two exercises. If you get good at squatting and you get good at lunging, you'll always have active and activated legs. Now, I will elaborate more on legs because they're so complex and they actually need a lot more stimulation than just that. Even though with if I were to give you two exercises for legs, it would be squatting and lunging because that's the easiest for you to do at all times. And it's the most scalable with weight. You can add the most weight to it. So with squatting and lunging, the other things that I would do, if now if you want to get more specific, like you want to grow your quadriceps and really see gains, or you want to grow your hamstrings and really see gains in your hamstrings. Well, what you would do, aside from getting good at the squat and lunge, is you would get good at these two different machines. You would get very, 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 very good at the leg extension machine. Everyone's leg extension machine actually might be a little different in their gym. Some people have life fitness. Some people have other stuff. Um, but the leg extension machine, you want to make sure that you're able to achieve a really great stretch in the leg extension and you're able to go through a full extension and basically squeeze that stretch that you just did with good weight and doing that, um, usually beyond 10 reps for the quadriceps quads are best trained in the range of 10 to 15 reps. And sometimes even usually in excess of that depending on the person and how resilient their quads are. So if their quads are very strong, you're in full fruit to benefit. You're fully capable of benefiting from training quads very, very hard and at a high rep range because they just need a lot of stimulation. It's a huge motherfucking muscle group. So you just need to squeeze them and stretch them and train them and hit them for a lot of reps. What's interesting is that the hamstring is the exact opposite. Isn't that kind of funny? They're also literally opposites on the body. So quadriceps is at the top, 
hamstrings at the bottom. And on that, the hamstring is meant to carry great loads of weight, propel you back upwards strongly and greatly and very quickly. Um, and it's meant to handle, it's on the strong, it's literally on the, the strongest bone on the human body, if I'm not mistaken, the femur. Um, like the, like the, I think the, if, yeah, 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 yeah. So your hamstring, your bicep femoris, um, is meant to actually deal with a lot of weight. But here's the cool thing about a lot of weight is that you actually can't do as many of them. So the hamstrings are best trained in a lower volume rep range. Um, ideally closer to the, um, six to eight rep range, six to 10 rep range below 10 for sure. And then that's not to say that they shouldn't be trained above 10 reps. It should, it could still be, but you just want to make sure you're giving yourself adequate rest in between sets, especially if you're going to perform really, really hard, really heavy. So that's hamstrings and then that's quadriceps. So quads usually 10 to 15 reps plus hamstrings, usually under 10 reps for the most part, but not always. Sometimes you can go over 10 that's hamstrings and quads. And then lastly, um, on the lower body, before we get into abs, finally for gym training, uh, and one more thing we'll do is heart training, a little bit of stretching. Nah, that's a lot of stuff. Never mind. Ask me that if, if you need, I'll make that another day. Um, for your calves, the calves basically calf raises, just get good at calf raises for goodness sake. If, oh, should my feet be pointing in, out, sideways, all of the above, do it, get good at it, stretch your calves, do it daily, do it all the time. You can build your calves and really train your calves to be immaculate in a month. I am not joking. Calves are just built different. You can do it kind of like abs, do them often and and massage them and take care of them and let them grow and intend to do them a lot you can actually do a fuck it you can do an at-home calf program just with a little bit of weights and a step and you could have transformed calves in a month and it would be like you look you look you change legs so calves just do calf races do a lot of it stretch it take care of it the calves are very resilient and they'll bounce back very quickly last is abs last is abs and then we're going to go into food and then we're going to go into tracking your progress I was not joking last I was going to go over a lot of stuff and all the stuff. We're at 52 minutes right now. I'm not chopping shit. Um, so also, if you're in this at this point and you're still listening, I'm so glad to have you. That means so much to me because I feel like I'm just talking about the stuff that I've always wanted to talk about. And maybe you're listening because you want to listen to stuff you've always wanted to listen to. And I'm hoping that you get good at this stuff because maybe one day we can talk about it. Or you can get good at it and experience getting good results. So lastly... Um, with abs, you want to do two different types of ab movements. You want to do uh, basically crunch movements and then twisting movements. You want to do both of those. And then some static hold. Static hold you can get basically through your training. And then with, with dynamic movements, sit-ups, and then uh, anything that has you do cross body or turn your body to the side, side to side. Think about like sports like baseball, hockey, lacrosse, where you have to swing. Um, twist your body, throw something, frisbee. The human body, when it rotates, torso rotation, when it starts to, when its torso gets familiar and accustomed to rotating, you feel so good. And your body feels so turned on and erect, pause. Um, your body feels so good because the structural integrity of a body that twists and turns, turn, excuse me, twists and turns and then also crunches is insane. It's immaculate. So um, two different things you want to do for the um abs so you want to do sit up motions think about right see so right where my uh right below this is the sternum right below the sternum where my little wishbone starts right rib cage right here right here and then down to like my re region like could be like where my abs are and all i want to focus on doing pause um if you're watching me pause um because i'm doing like a uh, like I'm giving myself head motion. I'm like crunching forward and then stretching. You just want to create as much of a stretch in that area as possible between those two, that, those two regions and then crunch it. That's a setup. Okay. That's a setup for goodness sake. And then the next thing, the last thing you want to do for abs, aside from planking, which is static is like cross body wood chops or even uh, windshield wipers, like on your back, just let your legs go left to right, left to right. And then what you want to do is focus on your breathing when you train abs. When, you, when you're stretching, you always want to inhale. And then when you're contracting your abs, flexing, you always want to exhale very hard and really feel your core tighten up. 
and then flex your core just like that. Okay, so that's abs training. That's training actually all together. What a successful split would look like. Obviously, to the chicas, you're going to want to do hip thrusts because every girl on the planet wants strong legs and a butt. Um, you're going to want to do hip thrusts for sure. So just do them and then do them twice a week, no less than twice a week. Um, squats, deadlifts, dumbbell bench press, dumbbell shoulder press, lat pull down, assisted pull ups, dips are a plus. Um, squats, extensions, curls, lunges, and then crunches and crossbody chops. And bicep curls and tricep extensions are basically about it. Okay. So what do we do? This is the test if you're really listening. So what do we do when we see some fit fuck dumbass bitch ass trainer on Instagram showing you some fucking complex bullshit being like, you need to do this. What do you say? No, I don't. And just like that, you're out of the fitness rat race. You get good at those things. You'll be fit. You'll build muscle. Now what you want to do is get good at stretching them and taking care of them. If you do that, you will be in perfect physical condition. Okay. That's training. Once you hit a muscle group, you break down the tissue and then ideally you should take care of it, massage it, stretch it a little bit, and then you should sleep really well and you should eat your protein goal. Now let's talk about food. I love this topic because I think I can make it really simple. And for a lot of people, it's very confusing because people don't get what food is. I'm not trying to be mean, but a lot of people fundamentally just have an inaccurate understanding of food. Um, and so I'm going to give you like it straight. Like what you do, what do you need to know about food? Um, you know, in simple, what stuff do you need to that actually matters and what doesn't matter? And I'll show you the way that I think about it. And I think I have a very healthy mindset on food. Um, and I've, it's, it's through passion. I have a nutrient density chart on my wall. And I think that's God's greatest gift to us is showing us that he literally designed foods and naturally occurring things to be able to nourish your body for free with no influencer marketing, with absolutely no affiliate marketing, no code usage. God was just like, I think that you should have a potato because I love you so much. Isn't that amazing? So um, someone in my comment, it's always the dumber people too. Someone was in my comments on TikTok and was like, um, the nutrient density chart, I mean, you have to have an eating disorder at this point. I said, first of all, Janet, you dumb bitch. I'm literally nourished out the ass to where I could hyper provide for you. I could protect you and fend you from a predator. Should the world actually fall apart, and you and I were in a room together, you would want me on your side to help you. So I find it strange that you would confuse my passion and interest in fueling myself properly and healthily as a disorder. I would actually, in fact, say that this is a super order. This is a pro order. This is, um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know how you could be so disconnected to think that general interest in how to nourish myself could possibly be a disorder. You dumb buffoon. Anyway, people like her exist. So I have to make this very simple. <laughs> so, uh, here's how I want you to think of it. Here's how I want you to think of food. And if you think of it this way, it's just better. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with addressing some truths. It's a little bit more money to be fit. It's a little bit more money to get better food. Um, so with that information, you just need to prioritize your nutrition if you want to feel good. And I want you to consider that you are actually a sum of all of the food you've actually ever decided to eat. How else does your body sustain itself? You know what I'm saying? Um, the, you can either be made of Cheetos, you can be made of Oreos, or you can be made of steak and oranges and uh, Brussels sprouts. So think of it, think of it like this, the more fake food, the more pseudo food, the more not real food you eat, the weirder you're going to look because it just simply was you were not made to look like that and eat that stuff. Now we can still digest it and we can still eat it. But I want that to be your first thing that you think of is did God make this food for me? 
I think if people just thought that and not like, oh, he's trying to give me, you know, an Oreo. I mean, like, did he give it to me because I'm stupid? And like, because he, he set the bar so low to, to love you. He just needed you to be here to love you. And so you don't need an Oreo to be happy. But he did give you a steak to be happy. That is for certain. So my point is, if you think about food just distinctly, and you discern whether a food is naturally occurring or was it man-made. Just, just that. If you, if, and, if, and if you make 90% of your choices that what God gave you, it is so much easier on this journey to just have a very clear boundary as to what you're going to intake from now on, at least while you're on a program or trying to feel good. Um, so that's one. And two, and also I choose this too, myself, my fridge. I literally have all of this stuff I'm going to read out to you. Um, it's all mostly naturally occurring foods. I don't have very many snacks or processed foods. I have minimally processed foods like bread, pasta, and some other small stuff, Greek yogurt. But I don't have like legitimate fake food in my house. I just don't. That's a lifestyle choice. People will ask me or they'll, put, they'll push off my accomplishment for what I've done for myself and say they'll never do it. But I just simply wouldn't have the things in my pantry that they have in their pantry. Let alone, I wouldn't put those things in my mouth. I literally have a block. I had, I've had all kinds of junk food. I have cocoa pebbles in my fridge, actually, and I refuse to eat them. I have, uh, cause I, that was actually from three months ago. I just haven't thrown it out. Cause I get a block. Once I learn something, I just get a block and it's a lifestyle. I just choose not to have that. So, um, the people who, if you just think if you look 80 to 90% of your food, if it starts with naturally incurring ingredients, that's the, that's the win. And then the game from there, if I'm going to give you all of the game, this is it. The game from there, if you can hyper specify the, and this is a really simple ask or human, uh, criteria I would say is essential to have to be a fucking functional human being or to be one. Some people should have to, uh, okay, I'm not going to be mean. So if you can hyper specify what type of food you're going to eat and then you actually eat it, you can get so fit and so healthy. It is crazy. You will pay a little bit more, not much more, like 200 bucks more a month. Cancel your OnlyFans or stop getting Doritos at the store or stop getting Starbucks or it's literally a lifestyle choice. You can't tell me you don't have 200 bucks to work with. You just can't. When I was broke, I still made time for that. I'm just saying. So actually, that's a lie. I was an idiot when I was broke. I ate all the dumbest shit. I think they were correlated. But anyway, with food, now the next level of how to think about food is I want you to define food as one, what God gave us versus what we made us. That, that distinction is so much there. Then next, I want you to consider this. If I can hyper specify what food I eat and I actually eat it, I'll pretty much always be fit. I can get fit. And then this is what you do. You eat protein, you eat vegetables, you eat naturally occurring carbohydrates, and you stay within your personal calorie range, you're good. You're good. You're good, my guy. You're so good. You're fine. It's when people don't do that, they under, they overshoot it, they miss it, and then they're not consistent. And because their body looks like a bunch of inconsistency, they don't have the motivation because they don't get the results as quickly. But it's just because they weren't within the range. Now, the re now here's the interesting thing. It's no, no doubt. It's absolutely a truth to know that your emotional state and your perceived emotional state will directly influence how many calories you're going to consume. And what I mean by that is you choose and you have different behaviors when you're mad, when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're upset, when you're happy. <laughs> and you really master getting fit and being healthy and eating right when you master your food choices in each of those emotions to still be that of mostly naturally occurring foods. 
when you do that, you will be fit and you will really get food. So some of the specific foods then for people that want to learn how to do this, don't worry. Since you and I are gym buddies, I made you something. I have that list. You can go to my Instagram. Um, it should be there. Maybe I'll have a website. Maybe I'll, you can DM me and ask me for this. Depends on when you're listening to this. Um, but let's start with protein and how much and how to do it. This is what I'm known for. If I'm known for anything in the fitness community, it is the palm size method. I did not come up with it. I simply made it popular. It's kind of like the founder, you know, the McDonald's story. Uh, Ray Kroc goes to the McDonald's brothers and sees like the first McDonald's ever. And it's like, this thing is amazing. He's like, they, they need to be everywhere. And they were like, no, we don't want that. We want good quality. We don't want ironic kind of. He's like, we want good quality. We'd never want to lose quality. This is everything to us. We want to keep it small so we can maintain scale. And Ray Kroc, the guy who's actually quote unquote, the founder who says he's the founder of McDonald's was like, nah. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he basically opened up more McDonald's. He got into business with them, then kind of fucked him and then yada, yada. He made it popular. If it weren't for him, uh, you wouldn't know it. So that's sort of like palm size has always existed. In fact, I think the FDA came up with the palm size method, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but the palm side method goes as such. So you as a human being have a protein goal. 180, let's just say, is your weight. And you're wondering how much protein to have a day. Well, what you do is you do your body weight and protein or your desired body weight and protein at a minimum, ideally, or that's your goal for the day. Now, let's say it's 180, take your body weight and multiply or take your body weight, whatever your body weight is or your ideal body weight, and you divide it by 35. So for me, I got five, you might have gotten a different number. So that number that you got is how many times you need to eat 35 grams of protein, right? Because a pro that's so like five times or four times or five or oh, six times or whatever it is. Some people have a big number, some people have a small number. Um, here's how you go about it. Look at your palm because the best way to look at protein is ideally from animal meat, chicken, uh, fish, beef, steak, basically like turkey, um, other, other meats. That, that amount – here's the cool thing about like nature and why – God is so cool. That amount of meat, think about how much of it that God would give you if he wanted you to wake up happy the next day and, and, and nourished positively the next day. It wouldn't be much more than what you could hold on to. So you at least now can visualize how much meat you should be eating. So check this out. If your protein goal is five, palm, five, five uh, servings of 35, for, if you look at the shape and the volume and the mass of your palm, it's about four to six ounces of meat. It's about four to six ounces of meat roughly, which is about on average 35 grams of protein. That's chicken, uh, that's chicken, steak, uh, like beef, turkey, salmon, shrimp, tuna. That amount of meat literally is about 35 grams of protein. So what you can do is take that and use that to plan out the rest of your day as to how you're going to get those, that protein in. And if you don't feel like eating that much meat, that's where protein shakes come in and they help you close the goal. So they count as like a serving, for instance. Now, um, here's, the, here's the cool part. When you prioritize protein, you're actually your best across every area, basically. It's so, because what protein is, is it's the most filling macronutrient. It's the most filling food because it's so rich in nutrients. It's so rich. Typically, protein content is so rich in nutrients. It literally is the most satiating. Like when you eat a lot of chicken, you don't feel like eating a whole lot more afterwards. Like your inspire, your desire to eat, you know, something crazy after that is like very, very low because it's very, it's you're eating, digesting a good chicken or like good beef, good quality stuff is like, I'm fine. I don't need to eat right now anymore. Like I'm going to process this and put this away. Um, and get, we've now got energy. Thank you. So think about it like this, that amount of meat, that amount of protein per day is going to be best planned out, I would say primarily if you're someone who's trying to burn fat for sure, definitely start with like um, having pointing yourself to how am I going to eat my protein goal today 
above all. If I had to achieve something or anything, I'm going to eat my protein goal at least. Because then what happens is, well, the protein, let's list this off. Protein. There's chicken thigh. There's chicken breast. There's rotisserie chicken. There's ground chicken. Then there's ground turkey. And then there's even like turkey bacon. And then there's most, even above all, there's eggs. There's real eggs, chicken eggs, good eggs. So each of these meats, that, like this poultry specifically, um, will range between, uh, per serving, 18 grams to 26 grams. On the high end, 28, like chicken breast might be. It's because chicken breast is a lot of pro- It's just straight meat, straight muscle. It's just straight protein. Um, that's why it's a favorite among bodybuilders. I think there's way better ways to eat your protein. I personally hate the texture of chicken. Um, especially like most chicken that I make, I'm not very good at it. I'm way better at cooking beef and turkey. Um, so all that poultry will have about 18 to 26 grams of protein per serving per four ounces to six ounces. So, um, what you want to do is just, even if you're a little under your goal, just prep your day out. Then next we've got for next, uh, preferred protein sources, uh, steak, beef, literally beef. Think of the cow beef. It's got ribeye, New York strip, a filet. You've got ground beef. You've got a flank. You've got beef bacon. You've got sirloin or top round steak. I personally love ribeye and I love filet. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're very satisfying to eat. And I find that I can eat way less amount of food and get the same amount of calories and the same amount of like stuff. But I feel great about what I'm eating as compared to something else. So I do really well with beef and steak, like ribeye and filet, because it's very good tasting. I cook it really well with butter. Um, and you should be using butter and olive oil on your food. This is that's and salt. You're gonna if you eat clean, you're gonna need butter, olive oil, and salt. You want some good, healthy fats. Then next, that's most of the protein. What about fish? You can have fish. Just look it up. All right. I don't like talking about fish. I don't really eat fish. So I'm not gonna be disingenuine. Uh Next is carbohydrates and vegetable. This is basically how you plan your food. Are you ready? One more swig. It's like a marathon. Oh my God. Uh, woo. Okay. So now how to eat. You've got your carbohydrates and you've got your vegetables. Now I'm going to go vegetables first because you should know that vegetables are free. No, I'm dumb serious. Vegetables are the most economic, an onion, vegetables are the most economic and the highest nutrient density. That's why vegans are so annoying. They've always got the energy to tell you that they're a vegan. They've got the highest nutrient density. And it's like the lowest cost per dollar of any real vegetable or product, food. Basically, so vegetables like tomatoes, carrots, onions, peppers, cabbages, asparagus, cucumbers, peas, beets, green beans, eggplant, broccoli, zucchini, any leafy green, Brussels sprouts. (laughs) I mean, all of this stuff, it's impossible if you get good at cooking two to three of those things in two to three different ways. My guy, it's impossible. It's impossible to not be an absolute energetic weapon. It's just not. And you're satisfied. You're going to poop great. There's people who I've asserted before. One of my claims to fame opinions is that I think the world is divided into people who eat vegetables and people who don't eat vegetables, aka also people who have energy and poop good versus people who don't have energy and don't poop good. So vegetables are definitely the first aid kit to your body. It's the wellness shot instead of a wellness shot. I see people who need swindling to just get a wellness shot. It's like some fucking vegetables and some shit. And they think it's like something that's so complex and formulated. But it's like if you just made a point to have some of this shit, yo, you would be so happy. And you'd be happier than you would if you had gotten a wellness shot maybe juice juice yourself you should get a juicer maybe i should get a juicer maybe i'll get a juicer i'm down next is carbohydrates now if you eat your protein goal and you eat vegetables with your protein 
should make a goal to have at least two to three servings of protein per day. Uh, I mean, vegetables per day. You should make that your goal. And then what you can do is fill up your carbohydrate goal, ideally with naturally occurring carbohydrates, because you have less of a crash afterwards and you can perform better uh, on anything mentally, physically, for the most part, it's just, you get the advantage. I'm not saying that you can't work or it's impossible to work after having sugar, but it's definitely significantly harder. Um, and most importantly, even to maintain sometimes even for some people, a good emotional state. You fucking sugar rat. Yeah. I'm talking to you now. Everyone look at the sugar rat. Everyone look at the person who can't control themselves because of sugar. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I just took a screenshot. We all did. And I want you to know that you're bigger than sugar. Okay. You, the one that we're looking at, come on. We all have that person who says they can't live their life. Without, I get it. It makes you happy, but to, but you're just slowing everyone down because you look like shit. I'm just joking. Am I? Someone had to say it, but you don't want to be a sugar rat, you know? So that's just speak for itself. Why would you be something you don't want to be? That sounds like a miserable existence. So naturally occurring carbohydrates. This is like rehab for the sugar rat. This is like, yo, this is literally naturally occurring carbohydrates is like literally rehab for the sugar rat. And um, so think about it like this, because that's real sugar. Sugar that you eat in the Reese's or in the whatever, the candy bar is like 10 times, 50 times the actual real amount of sugar than in a dish of literal blueberries or strawberries or even like watermelon or grape. Like it's still so much more and it's just hyper crystallized and put into the food because it tastes good. And it makes us really happy and we like it. We like the taste of it. That's why it's in there. So what I'm saying is this is carbohydrate, real carbohydrates, real sugar is literally rehab for the sugar rat. I was a sugar rat. I accidentally became one because I started eating crumble. I started eating one crumble cookie a day every day for 130 days. And oh my God, that's so funny to think about. I don't even remember myself from back then. So when I ate that, oh my God, that is so funny to think about. When I ate crumble, my face was puffier. My digestion was not as good. It was okay, but it wasn't as good. And if I may say, I feel so physically good with low sugar um, and just good sugar, but not like hyper processed sugar. Um, the stuff that I eat now, here's the list of the carbohydrates. Rice, potatoes, bread, good bread, good bread. Not you know what. Good bread, sourdough, whole whole wheat, whole grain bread. Dave's killer bread's fine. Um, Greek yogurt. This doubles as protein, which is really cool. It's actually more protein, most Greek yogurts, than it is carbs. If you get the good stuff. If you get real Greek yogurt, don't get any of that triple zero shit or any of that other. I think that's actually fine, but I think there's just more stuff, more steps or stuff put into that one. I prefer having it as bare and clean as possible, like real yogurt. I prefer that. And what I do is I'll do Faye or um, Chobani non-fat plain Greek yogurt. And then if you mix any protein powder that you really like with that, it becomes that flavor. And you can put some fruit in there and it's literally the best dessert ever. Put some fruit, some nuts, some chocolate chips. Don't go overboard. But you can really, really get such a great, incredible dessert out of that and wipe any sweet tooth. So... Uh, Greek yogurt is actually so good for um, your cravings and just feeling full. It's so rich and so thick and it covers so much of your mouth. Pause. Um, then we've got cottage cheese. Not for me, but it does also double as protein just as Greek yogurt does. I don't know what type of cottage cheese to get. I wouldn't, I, I'm not well versed in cottage cheese. I would get the best cottage cheese that I can find in terms of calorie, protein, and then carb and fat. I'd look at, I'd just look at that ratio and then they add in ingredients. Um, and then whole milk, real milk, whole milk that actually triples as protein, fat, and carbs, more carbs, but 
it also has protein in it and also has fat in it. And then you've got fruit, basically any fruit. So those products, so rice, potatoes, you know, sweet potatoes, roussette potatoes, um, uh, tor some tortillas are okay. Some, 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 most of them are made with oil. If you get whole wheat tortillas, I think those are a bit better. Uh, Greek yogurt, um, whole milk, and then fruit, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries are the lowest calorie and you can eat the most of it. And it's got the highest amount of antioxidants. You can eat that, but you can also have really cool stuff like kiwi, mango, bananas. You can have all of that stuff, but those three berries I just listed are the most nutrient dense compared to calories. So literally in terms of how much volume you can eat and how good you'll feel afterwards. So berries are like a treat and a treasure. That is literally um, the main list of carbs. I was going to say, it's like, that's like rehab for the sugar rat. It is. So uh, we've covered food and then hitting your goal. So long as you hit your protein goal and your vegetables and you eat good food, and that's what you do 80% of the time and you're within your calorie range and you have a consistent ish, this, this is, this is going to really bring it home for you. I hope. Um, so long as you have a consistent food intake and you're for real about your food intake and you take your body weight, multiply it by 14, that's the amount of weight or amount of calories you would need to eat on a daily basis to stay at your weight. You'd take it a little bit less than that, like multiply it by 13, multiply it by 12, multiply it by 11, multiply it by 10, the more and more extreme you want to see your weight go down, you just eat less. Um, you can look up TDEE calculator and look up your, look up your, uh, numbers like TDE calculator.net even possibly. But, um, if you stay within your range by like 300 calories a day, at least, um, and you have, and then week over week, you're consistently in that, like you're just not going super past 300, but if you're staying within the range of hundred to 300 and you're consistently trending, you will literally just be successful. That's it. Like you'll be successful in the terms of fitness and weight loss. Um, you'll burn your body fat. And then so long as you're keeping your protein intake and you're having good animal protein and you're training hard, you'll be able to sustain and train and keep your muscle mass. The last thing I would talk about in this, this is so cool. I really feel like between you and I, I feel like I'm really happy that I gave this my best effort in giving you as much of the stuff that you might need. Um, and I've always had this on my mind and I've just have sort of been waiting for the excuse to say all of it. And there are really certain people that I need to thank who have gone through the process with me as clients and sustained and seen the results and the progress. And they completely took a risk and a gamble on me because I was some new profile on the internet that just started talking really simply about fitness and they all really bought into it and just did the stuff. And so certain people, I really owe you, um, my, 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 my biggest, my sin most sincere gratitude, people like Eric Baker. Um, one of my favorite clients I've ever met, um, Eric Baker, his transformation is sick and he is truly a fit guy. Now, literally if it is completed from like, he's considering getting certified right now, which is amazing, even though that's actually kind of useless and a cert doesn't really mean anything. Um, but he's a fit by fit person by choice. So Eric Baker, thank you for being an example and doing the stuff. Uh, Alex Goldrup, uh, another dude, exact same, exact same story. He's just really, truly a fit guy, but he really, he carried the boats. Alex, Alex Goldrup is a boats carrier. Um, whom else? Michelle, Michelle T from the female program. Thank you. Um, you have shed off literally such an enormous past life. And I don't give you the credit that you deserve for that. And so I'm calling it out now because you've contributed to knowing all of this and you've been a part of the experience and research. And it's been amazing um, having real people. I've got about 250 people who've started working with me since last year, beginning of last year through TikTok. And I have all of the data about what people ate, what they were training before when they, when they met me, what their biggest fears were in the gym, why they felt they weren't at their goal, what their goals are. I have some really interesting data and everyone who's contributed to that. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, um, you guys deciding to do that for yourselves have made all of this possible so that for people forward 
can benefit from your experience and you wanting the best for yourself. So thank you. Um, shameless plug also, if you want to be a part of that and you're looking for a place that you want to get fit as shit, DM me on Instagram or go through my website and inquire through there. Uh, but DM me your age, height, weight, what your problem is, and then let's get to work. Um, so everyone who, who contributed to this, thank you. And final words on what you can do for this to actually carry out and um, for you to achieve fantastic results. Progress photos. I would 100% take progress photos. Oh, and I would be shitting my pants if I didn't thank the girls in the girls program who show up for the group calls. Thank you. There's like Anissa, Ellie, Taylor. How could I, how could I, I apologize. Anissa, Ellie, Taylor, Scout, um, Kennedy, Michelle, Yvette. Who else? Maybe that's all for now. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Seriously. The coolest people on the internet. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so what to do tracking progress. I would take progress. Stick the pitchfork in the ground. Like take the photos for you. Get good at taking progress photos. Get good at taking post-workout photos. I am who I am because I take post-workout photos. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I worked out. And I work out and like, I actually, do you see this? It's because I, I manifested it. I manifested it. This is how you do it. Take photos. You rem you can literally watch your life progress in time. How sick is that? It's the coolest thing ever. So you should do it. Take your progress photos and then you should weigh yourself and then you should track your body fat percentage. Let me pop off for a second. You should track your body fat percentage without a motherfucking doubt because that's the whole point. You don't want to be getting fatter. You want to be improving your composition dropping body fat and building muscle. Okay. Then from there, you want to just see your weight trend, what you think it should be trending um, within expectation, within reason. But really what matters is you having um, consistent research and you're just trying to build your knowledge base on it. And you're just repeating, repeatedly trying. That's all. If you just keep trying and you keep documenting it, and then you keep trying to learn, you will be so fit and you will get the most out of the gym possible. If you got sent this, I'm hoping it's because that you've been struggling with the gym and maybe you under your breath have like murmured that and voiced that to some people. And you've got some great people in your life who want to sh who share this with you. And I'm flattered. I'm hoping that really you just see how simple this is. People who, for people who chose this video to watch, because maybe you wanted to listen um, to just exercise and nutrition commentary and mindset commentary, um, then all, also cool. Cool. Um, I, uh, so, and here's what I'm, I'm hoping last, most importantly, this is my, this is my first one. Technically this is episode one. I've done something like this similar in the past, but this is just a new iteration of it. My goal is for people to contribute their success stories so that you can see that you're not crazy. <laughs> That's it. Uh, if you've got anything else you want to add or if you've got anything else that you feel you want to share in terms of your success in the gym, your story in the gym, and you want to pay, lead the way for someone else, I would happily share that. And I believe that concludes it. I believe that concludes all of this. How do we want to end this? Well, I'll see you later, obviously. Um, episode two, we'll see what, what that is. I don't know if I, what more stuff I could share on this topic. Maybe some people will ask questions and we can go from there. If you liked this, I would love to know because I'm looking like a psychopath on an app recording this for people on the internet that I really love and I've never met. So nice to see you again. And if it's the first time we met, nice to meet you. Hopefully I'll be seeing you a, a whole lot more often. All right. Well, with this information comes a lot of responsibility because now you can no longer unsee this. You know that you can do it. And that's a gift. Enjoy it. I'll see you later.